Welcome. This is what is happening on the sun today, the 19th of February 2012. We've actually had a sea flare, albeit a minor sea flare, uh, but that is the first in six days. Before we get into all of that, let's deal with our trivia question for today. On the 19th of February 1986, the first component of the Russian space station Mir was launched. It set several space endurance records and still holds one. The longest time spent in space continuously by a single astronaut, or cosmonaut as it's more precisely known. How many months did he spend in space? Well, here is our sea flare in all its glory. A C1 event, and it came from a newly developing region near Disk Center. Here we have a three-day video from GOES showing the development of a region from a tiny bright point in the northeast to a small region trailing behind regions 1419 and 1420. In this Iron 16 image from SDO, we actually capture the image of the flare. You can also see the new region developing in this magnetogram from the SDO HMI instrument. It is emerging rapidly, and if it continues to do so, then we could be seeing the beginning of the growth of a major new region. However, we do need to remember the cautionary tale of region 1416, which grew very rapidly with some very large spots, but never produced any real significant activity. Now let's review what happened in this last week. We started the week with region 1416 at about its peak size, and when we all believed that this could be the start of something grand. But its rate of growth ceased, and from that point on, it slowly decayed as it approached the west limb. Soon thereafter, we had the much anticipated return of regions 1401 and 1402, which gave us lots of action last time around, and seemed very active on the backside of the sun but they had decayed significantly by the time they had rotated onto the visible disk again and were renumbered as regions 1420 and 1419 respectively. We can see from the one-week movies of the transition region and low temperature corona that the sun quietens down quite significantly as the week progresses. I'll let you watch them in peace for a while. It seems that even the coronal mass ejections were relatively quiet this week. That was Mercury exiting stage left, which means it's on the far side of the Sun from us. It will shortly be joining Jupiter and Venus as evening stars. The next time we see it in Soho, it will be overtaking the Earth on its inside track, heading west. So what has been happening in geospace this week? We've had two minor geomagnetic storms. I made a video earlier this week on the mysterious one that occurred on February the 15th. But we had another one this morning. This one was probably due to that faint CME that I mentioned a couple days ago. However, also the solar wind speed has been increasing significantly. And that's probably due to the two coronal holes in the Western Hemisphere that are now at a geo-effective longitude. Now let's sit back and watch the beauty of applied mathematics trace out what has happened to our magnetosphere over the last week. Note I have put the magnetospheric pressure 
at the bottom left of these images and the KP index for each day at the top left. Pay particular attention to the changes or lack thereof in the magnetosphere on the 15th during that mysterious geomagnetic storm.
Pretty neat, huh? Forecasting the future is a lot harder than reviewing the past, as we've seen before. From the images that we have from the Solar Dynamics Observatory, it seems as though we may get some filament eruptions soon. There are at least three promising candidates. One is the Southern Polar Crown filament. The second is at high latitudes in the northeast, and the third is on the east limb. As far as returning regions are concerned, there is a faint region in the south just visible over the east limb, but inspection of the composite coronal image shows that there is not a very impressive region there at the moment. There is a large complex in the north due back in five to seven days, but as we have seen in the past, they can easily decay significantly in a time as long as that. Our best bet, in the short term at least, is this newly developing region. We will be losing region 1418 over the west limb in a day or two, and by that time region 1419 and 1420 will be on the west limb. So I'm forecasting solar activity to increase in the coming week, based on nothing more than it would be hard for it to get any quieter. However, I'm still sticking to my forecast of a major burst of activity between now and the end of April. Hopefully the Southern Hemisphere will also get round to participating in this solar cycle sometime fairly soon. The answer to our trivia question is that Valery Polyakov spent 14 months on the Mir space station. I calculated the distance that he travelled orbiting the Earth would take him about halfway to Jupiter. If you want to find out more about what's going on in the Sun, follow some of the links in the description box below. If you like this video and would like to see more of my videos, then go to my channel, they're all listed there. And if you'd like to follow what's going on on the Sun on a regular basis, please subscribe. So that's it for today. Keep safe. Bye for now.